In this fourth episode of my off-grid rainwater tank series, I'll install a solar panel on the roof of the garden pavilion behind me, then wire that to a controller that charges a deep cycle battery, and that will power a 12 volt water pump to irrigate part of our garden. I'm not a solar panel installer or electrician, just a DIYer that's enthusiastic about solar. About five years ago, I installed a solar system on our RV, and that system is working flawlessly to this day. That was a lot of fun to do, so I was looking forward to building another system here in the garden. The solar controller and other electrical parts will be first mounted on a piece of three quarter inch plywood. Then this will be attached to the back wall of the mini pump house box. The solar controller must be connected to a battery first before it can be connected to a panel. So I'll build a control board first. I bought a 100 watt panel with a 30 amp controller in a kit from Renogy. I have a similar setup on my RV and everything is still working fine. I first mounted the controller, then a fuse block in pretty much the middle of the board. From the controller to the fuse block is a red positive wire with a 40 amp fuse. To the left of the fuse block is an ANL fuse holder. I size the fuse according to the gauge of the wire going to the battery and with the option of adding a 750 watt inverter later. Once I have the layout set for where everything goes on the board, I attach the components and begin to make up the wires for the connections. Here I'm cutting and stripping the wire from the positive of the fuse block to one terminal of the ANL fuse. I want to remove just enough insulation so there's no wire showing when I slide the lug on. I have a simple lug cable crimping tool and it works really well. It's cheap and it's fast. This one is spring loaded so I just set the lug in the jaws, hold the wire, then hit it with a hammer. I check the fit, then slide on some heat shrink tubing. This will make the connection watertight. I'll secure that cable with washers and nuts and check that the cover of the fuse block still fits. On the other side of the board, I'll add a shunt to the black negative wire that will lead to the battery. I fabricated a holder for this shunt from scrap plywood as it didn't come with one. A shunt will allow me to monitor how much power is going in or out of the battery. I'm now making the negative wire from the controller to the fuse block, and then the negative from that same terminal to the shunt. The wire from the controller is 8 gauge, and the wire to the shunt is 4 gauge. Here I'll add a toggle switch for the water pump. I made a small bracket from plywood for this switch. Then I'll run a positive wire from the switch to the fuse block. This circuit in the block will have a 10 amp fuse. I'll strip that wire, then crimp on a connector.
Then heat the sleeve to shrink it. Then secure that wire to the block. I drilled two holes through the plywood. Then add two bolts to make up terminals for the solar panel wires. Then I'll make up the positive and negative wires that go from the controller to these terminals. I'm doing this to make the connection and disconnection of the panel wires easier. The controller that came with this kit has terminal screws at the back, and they will be difficult to get at once I mount this board in the pump house box. I've learned a lot about solar panel systems from reading Handy Bob's solar blog, and from watching Will Prouse's channel. I'll put a link to these excellent resources in the description below. The monitor displays are attached to the shunt and will show the charging and discharging of the battery. I used speaker wire and crimp connectors for this. The displays also need power so there's wires to the block for that. I'll have a list of all the parts and tools I used on my blog post at manabouttools.com tank500. Now I'll connect the red positive wire to the battery. followed by the negative. If everything is wired correctly, then the solar controller will show the battery voltage, and one of the monitors will show a small draw from the battery as well. I'm sure it's just me, but I really like making up these systems and mounting and connecting all the hardware. Smoke test. Looks like everything's working okay. Got 12.83 uh, volts in the battery, and it's currently drawing 0 0.04 of an amp. And there's nothing going into, so this is coming out of the battery, this is going into the battery. Um, since I don't have my solar panels connected yet, I don't have that. It's got a temperature of 31 degrees Celsius, uh, it's generating no volts at all. All right. So it looks like everything is everything's working fine. Excellent. Then I can mount this to the back wall of the box and connect the battery terminals. The 12-volt pump I have won't draw a lot of amps, so for now, a single 100-watt solar panel will work for this system. The roof of the pavilion is sloped to the south, and the pump will only be used in the summer months when there's lots of sun. The kit comes with roof mounting brackets. They are attached to the panel with nuts and bolts.
To protect the panel while I'm handling it, I'll cut some cardboard and tape it to the face. And this will also prevent any shorts or sparks from the wires if I accidentally cross them. I'm not sure if I needed to do this, but it can't hurt. I'll set the panel in place on the roof of the pavilion and check that the feet of the bracket sit flat between the ribs. Looks like it just fits. I cut a strip of a turnabon tape and stick it to the roof under the brackets. This should make a watertight seal and the roofing screws have a rubber washer. Now I can drill two holes in the roof for the panel wires. These wires run through a watertight housing that I'll silicone to the roof. I'll tape that in place while the silicone cures. Then connect these wires to the panel and tuck the connectors up underneath. I'll run these wires down a rafter and secure them with cable ties. The wires run down the rafters, along the downspout pipe, across the top of the surround and down and behind the pump house box. I added lugs to the ends of these wires and then connect them to the bolt terminals on the board. And it worked out that the wires that came with this kit were exactly the right length to just make it to these terminals. Just, just makes it, oh man. I'll tape up the bare positive terminal. For now, I'll cover this just with a little bit of tape. And now I can remove the cardboard from the panel. I have a spin down sediment filter that I will also mount to a board before adding it to the pump house. It has a three quarter inch ball valve on either side of the filter and I add 90 degree elbows and a barbed hose adapter. The drip irrigation will have additional finer filters, but this spin down will catch anything that makes it past the downspout screen.
And now I can mount that in place. Even though these 12 volt pumps have rubber mounting feet, they still vibrate a lot. So I thought I would try to reduce this with an additional rubber mount. I cut a piece of plywood and glue on a scrap piece of rubber flooring. I'll use contact cement for this. Then I'll glue this to the bottom of the pump house box. You can also see from this angle that I added a plywood divider to the box to keep the electrical side separate from the potentially wet pump side in case I had a leak somewhere. I'll set the pump in place and screw it to this small piece of plywood. The contact cement worked very well and I don't think this board is ever coming off. The spin down sediment filter has a valve at the bottom so you can quickly remove some of the debris that builds up. For this sediment to drain, I'll drill a hole through the box and connect a half inch hose. A black 3 quarter inch water line runs into the box from the bulkhead float fitting on the tank and is connected to the barbed fitting on the filter assembly and the outlet of the filter to the inlet of the pump with a clear braided hose. The pump is wired to the fuse block and to the switch, so now it's time for the first test. I'll turn on the ball valve on the tank and flip the toggle switch. All right, we're gonna try this for the first time. Got the pump connected, power to it. I'll turn the pump switch on. All the valves are open and we'll see if it has enough power to draw some water here. Water's running. And it's nowhere near as loud as I thought it was going to be. But that's pretty good. Don't see any leaks. You're running okay. Fantastic. Okay. And the system works. It's really nice when this happens the first time. And here's a few more shots of the inside of the pump house. Let me know your thoughts here. I'm always interested in viewer feedback. As I'd mentioned, I built this system with room to expand in the future and to power other lights and appliances around the pavilion next year. I left enough room in the pump house box to add another battery and maybe a small inverter if needed. And the controller and system can handle more solar panels if the one I started with is not enough. I'd have to look into upping my cables and fuses to handle bigger loads, of course. So, thanks for watching, stay safe, and we'll see you next time.